Welcome to The Haunted Beard, everybody. My name is Jake. Thank you for joining me. Well, I'm very excited about my video today, as today I want to talk to you about 20 movies about cursed movies. There's something I find very intriguing that just immediately captures my interest when a horror movie has some sort of element of a cursed movie within it, or some sort of lost, obscure, or forgotten media within the movie itself. It's just a, an aspect uh, within the movie that I just can't help but take an interest in. And so, as I said, today I've got 20 movies to talk to you about. Actually, technically, there's like 17 movies and then a few TV shows. I'm also going to include in this video where you can watch all of these because I'm sure you're curious and want to know. So I'll be sure to put that information in the video. And I'm going to keep this spoiler free as this is mainly kind of a hidden gem recommendation type video as well. I'm going to start off the list with some of the more obvious well-known ones and then as I get into the list it's going to get more kind of hidden gem obscure type stuff so without further ado here we go first movie I want to talk to you about I'm sure probably everybody has heard and probably even seen but that is The Ring this of course came out in 2002 stars Naomi Watts and this is the classic seven days movie where this investigator played by Naomi Watts investigates the mystery why there is this cursed videotape that kills people in seven days after they watch it. And even after all these years, I think The Ring is still one of the better PG-13 horror films, and maybe one of the very few PG-13 horror films that I would say is genuinely creepy and scary and pretty effective. And I'll never forget the first time watching it, that scene, you probably know what I'm getting ready to talk about. When it cuts back to that girl in the closet and the look on her face, oh my dear goodness. Nightmares, absolutely terrified, scared the crap out of me. And uh, yeah, The Ring Man, pretty effective stuff. This one I have a little bit of a soft spot for too because it was filmed fairly close to where I live, which is always kind of cool. You get a good story, good mystery here, get some good atmosphere, and I think the climax still delivers. So if by some crazy chance you haven't seen The Ring, definitely go check it out. Next up on the list is Sinister. This came out in 2012 and was directed by Scott Derrickson. You may know from movies like The Black Phone. Also stars Ethan Hawke as well. And this one is about this true crime writer played by Ethan Hawke who just moves his family into this new house and he finds this box up in the attic filled with these Super 8 film reels. And he's shocked to find out that these films could actually be connected to the murder case that he is researching. Sinister's got some good atmosphere, good performance by Ethan Hawke. Very dark, got, you know, demonic aspect, just very sort of creepy and, and really kind of messed up. There's a great jump scare in this movie as well. The lawnmower scene is something that I will not forget anytime soon. And I'm sure most of you have also probably seen Sinister, but if you haven't, check it out. It's definitely worth your time. Next up on the list is 8mm. This came out in 1999 and stars the one and only Nicolas Cage. He plays this private investigator who is hired to discover whether or not this snuff film is authentic or not. And this film is going to be like many other films on this list that are going to involve a very dark mystery and this sort of investigative aspect that I just absolutely love. I Obviously, I'm a sucker for horror movies but especially mystery horrors, man, that combination right there, I just, takes me over the top kind of thing. And 8mm is a dark and bleak movie. It's got just some seedy, sketchy characters and people in it. And it also looks at like underground video culture where, you know, things that only exist in physical media form on these VHS tapes and people like trading tapes and, you know, trying to get more extreme content. It, I don't, it just has this kind of, interesting uh, look into a, a very kind of niche culture that I find interesting. So yeah, 8 millimeter. it's a it's a dark one, but uh, if you like kind of that dark horror mystery with, you know, the, the cursed media aspect, check it out. All right, next up on the list is Videodrome from David Cronenberg. This came out in 1983 and stars James Woods. And this one tells the story of this TV programmer who's trying to track down these producers of this TV show called Videodrome, which is a very disturbing and bizarre television program. And so Videodrome really deals more with a cursed TV broadcast, 
But look, it's Cronenberg. You're going to get some really great body horror in this one. It's pretty fantastic, very memorable. And this one has aged really well. This is, it's such like a, a timely movie that is even relevant today, 40 plus years later, as it really has to do with how we are affected by media and by television and how we are overstimulated and desensitized by it all. And so, yeah, it has some interesting themes that are still very relevant today, even all these years later. But I would say uh, Videodrome is a classic or a borderline classic at this point. So if you haven't seen it, though, definitely check it out. Next up on the list is Incantation. This came out in 2022 and Actually, I have a full review for this one on my channel, so if you want some more in-depth thoughts, check that out. But this movie kind of took the internet by storm when Netflix dropped it uh, just a couple years ago. But this is an interesting one because you've got the actual movie itself is kind of presented as its own cursed film. As it starts off by issuing you, the viewer, a warning that you are about to watch a cursed film. And so we are watching the video from this cursed video camera and the tape that was found on it. So this one has a pretty unique type of kind of presentation to it. It also breaks the fourth wall. You got a found footage aspect. You definitely got a mystery aspect to it. This one also surprised me as well as there is a large element of the movie that focuses on the relationship between a mother and her daughter as this mother is trying to protect her daughter from this curse that was unleashed upon herself. And I found there to be a, a pretty kind of impactful and, and significant kind of dramatic weight to their relationship and kind of what a mother is willing to do to look out for and protect her daughter. And so there's some pretty good kind of drama going on here as well. And then once you get towards the end and the whole climactic sequence that you see, you know, with the cursed video camera and everything is pretty fantastic. There's a whole kind of perception versus reality element in here, which I'm always a fan of and, and find to be pretty interesting. So yeah, Incantation's uh, a pretty good one. If you haven't seen it, check it out. All right, next up on the list is Inland Empire, and this comes from the great David Lynch. And this is a weird one. Now, as far as the cursed film or media element in this, it is about these actors who decide to make this movie that they discover is a remake from this old cursed movie production. And we actually see some footage in the movie of this cursed film production. At least, I think we do. I'm still not entirely sure what to make of this movie, to be honest with you, but I absolutely love it. It is one of the most unique and kind of indescribable, Indescri inexplicable movies that I've ever seen. I mean, it's David Lynch. What else do you need to say? But I find it absolutely captivating in in kind of a, a way that I don't even know how to explain. It's such a unique film and it, man, it will mess you up. It is nightmare inducing. It's got some imagery that will creep you the heck out. But man, it's so interesting and so bizarre and weird and I, I can't recommend it enough. You know, you may absolutely hate it, but you may absolutely love it. Either way, I can guarantee you've never seen anything quite like it before. So, yeah, check out Inland Empire if you dare. Next up is The Poughkeepsie Tapes. This is a found footage film. And this one's about how these police uncover in this abandoned house hundreds of videotapes that show years and years of this serial killer's work. And I will say this is genuinely one of the more unsettling, upsetting, and disturbing movies I've seen. And I'll say Poughkeepsie Tapes is one that I would kind of give more of a slight recommendation to. It's kind of more on the mid-tier for me. And some of that has to do with the way it's presented as some of the footage is extremely grainy and fuzzy. And it, it, they just kind of go a little overboard with some of the shaky cam and some of the grain and fuzz and stuff like that in it to where it's a bit much. But I wanted to mention this one because I know it's sometimes talked about when talking about disturbing movies, especially, you know, within the found footage subgenre. And if you haven't seen this one and it sounds interesting to you and you like disturbing stuff and found footage stuff, uh, yeah, uh, you you'll you won't forget it. I'll say that it's got some scenes that are going to stick with you. That is pretty creepy and messed up stuff. So 
Don't say I didn't warn you, but uh, yeah, Poughkeepsie Tapes, check it out if you dare. Next up on the list is Resolution, and this is a film I give a very solid recommendation to. This was directed by Justin Benson and Aaron Moorhead, some of the more underrated directors working in horror today, but some pretty talented dudes. This came out in 2012, and this one tells the story of these two friends. One of them ends up kind of capturing and chaining up his other friend in this little cabin in the middle of the woods uh, because his friend is a junkie and he's trying to help him get off drugs. And then they start to discover that something about the area in the woods where they are is off and weird and some just kind of bizarre, strange things start occurring. And the cursed movie element in this one, if I reveal it, I feel like it is a spoiler. And so I'm not going to say how that exactly fits into the story. This one too also has a bit of a found footage aspect to it, which lends towards what the cursed media movie element is, but I don't want to give any more details away because this movie does something that I think is very creative and, and unique and something I've never really seen before. It's it's pretty thought provoking. It's one of those movies that I think like you kind of got to pay a little extra close attention and, you know, going back and rewatching it, you'll kind of pick up on things and little clues. So it rewards multiple viewings. But this is a film that is just really cool. It's just a cool movie. I don't know how else to say. It's just really cool because it's just so different. And the whole movie just has a very ominous, mysterious atmosphere to it. And then once you kind of get to the end and are able to kind of start figuring out what exactly they're doing, it's pretty cool, man. So, yeah, I actually just talked about this movie in one of my recent videos talking about hidden gem horror movies, but... It's, it's just one of those movies I can't recommend enough. If you haven't seen Resolution, go check it out. It is pretty good stuff. Next up on my list is Broadcast Signal Intrusion. And this is a film, just came out a few years ago in 2021. Kind of flew under the radar, not a whole lot of people talked about, but I quite enjoyed it as this one takes place in the late 90s. So for me, that's a little bit of my uh, sweet spot. You kind of get some nice childhood nostalgia vibes and stuff like that in this one. But it takes place in the late 90s, and it's about this guy who uncovers this, like, uh, illegal pirated TV broadcast and becomes obsessed with it. And it opens up this crazy kind of, you know, conspiracy thriller, mystery, you know, paranoid type stuff. It just kind of has that cool analog old school technology vibe to it. If you like conspiracy paranoia type stories, definitely check this one out. This one too has, to me anyway, some pretty creeped out imagery with just the kind of uncanny valley. There's something about when like you, you have just this like white mask that it like sort of looks like a person, but a little bit off. It's just creepy to me, man. It really just, yeah, kind of tweaks me out a little bit. If you haven't seen this one, check it out. It gets a solid recommendation from me. All right, next up, we've got Sensor. And Sensor is a pretty cool one. This one, again, like a lot of these, has a very mystery element to it. But this one almost has this kind of historic fiction aspect to it as it tells a story of this woman who is a part of this British censorship board and she is investigating these movies called The Video Nasties, which actually existed in real life. And so there is this real historic aspect to this, but then obviously tells a fictionalized version. But The Video Nasties were these movies that came out in the 70s and 80s that contained, uh, I guess, unacceptable, you know, or explicit type content that, you know, the British censorship board didn't want people watching. And so it kind of uses that as the backdrop as one day she is watching this film and sees who she thinks is her missing sister that disappeared many, many years ago. And she goes to investigate her disappearance and try to figure out what exactly happened. And I just really got into the story with this one. The whole historic aspect to it, I thought was just really cool. It kind of a unique type of approach. It's got some good atmosphere, good visuals. The lead performance is pretty solid as well. So yeah, Sensor, if you haven't seen it, you know what to do. 
Next up on my list is another kind of unique one, and this is John Carpenter's Cigarette Burns. And this is, I guess you could call it a TV movie or a, a TV episode, as this originally aired as a part of the Masters of Horror TV series. Uh, but I think it has since then been released as its own kind of individual TV movie. But this is one that I watched a long, long time ago, and I have never, ever forgotten it. This one stars Norman Reedus, and he is this kind of private investigator who is hired by this extremely wealthy guy to track down this movie that is supposedly cursed, that causes people to go completely insane if they watch it. And again, you get this investigative mystery aspect. Man, I just take right to it and it just eat those stories up. I can't get enough of it. And I'll never forget, from what I can remember, this is this was like my first introduction into what a snuff movie was. And I remember being like, that is messed up. And so just this having been my kind of first intro to that, I think is one of the main reasons why this has stuck with me for so long. And so, yeah, it, it, it goes to kind of similar to like what 8mm does. It goes into that kind of underground seedy culture with just some weird characters and just messed up stuff. I would definitely consider this kind of one of John Carpenter's underseen, you know, hidden gems kind of thing. So if you're a Carpenter completist and you by chance haven't seen it, you got to check it out. It's pretty good stuff. Next up, we got a film called Thesis, or Tesis, which is a Spanish language film that came out in 1996. Was directed by Alejandro Amenabar, who you may know directed great movies like Abre los Ojos and also The Others with Nicole Kidman. But this one tells a story about this college girl who is doing her thesis about violence in film and in the media, and she discovers this snuff video of this woman being killed, and she finds out that the woman actually attended the college that she attends. And this is, again, it's another great mystery. You get this kind of amateur sleuth sort of, you know, investigative aspect to it. And this one has some really interesting themes when it comes to violence in movies and kind of looking at our obsession or fascination with it and, you know, asking questions of like, you know, what should be allowed to be shown in movies and what shouldn't be and is there a line and can you cross it and all that stuff. And so amongst, you know, a, a really intriguing and compelling story with some definite disturbing media, cursed media aspects, you got kind of some interesting kind of thought provoking themes mixed in there as well. And so, yeah, Thesis is a, a really solid one. Definitely more of a hidden gem. I feel like not too many people have probably seen it, but definitely worth your time. This one gets a very solid recommendation from me. Next up on the list is Butterfly Kisses. This is a found footage, and this is one of my all-time favorite found footage films. And I kind of feel like this one is a bit of a hidden gem as well. Doesn't get talked about too often. This is another one that has a really unique type of presentation to it. And this one tells the story of this director who uncovers this box of mini DV tapes. And on those tapes is this documentary that these two students are trying to film and produce that tells a story of this local legend uh, called the Peeping Tom from the town that they live in. And this one has this cool aspect because it has this kind of almost meta like a film within a film type aspect to it. And so the, the cursed movie, the cursed media here is the documentary and the tapes that he finds in the documentary that these students are making. But, and I really, really liked Butterfly Kisses. Again, it's got a great mystery. It's got that cool kind of local legend folklore aspect to it. I just really found the story very compelling and very interesting, and it really kind of grabbed me and hooked me right in. Butterfly Kisses is another one that gets a really strong recommendation for me, especially if you like found footage. Next up on the list is Berberian Sound Studio, and this one tells a story of this sound designer and editor who works for this Italian horror movie company. And as he's working on and editing this horror film, he begins to see that the lines between the real world and the movie world start to blur and, and life starts imitating art kind of thing. And this is one that I kind of give more of a slight recommendation to. 
Uh, just for me personally, this is a movie that was a little bit lighter on the story and more heavy on the style, and I really did appreciate the style. This one, too, gives a, a bit of an homage, kind of a nod to Italian giallo stuff, so if you're a giallo fan, you'll probably find something in here to appreciate. This is a movie that really relies more heavily on mood and atmosphere. The sound design, though, in this is pretty fantastic. And this is a film that uses quite a bit of restraint, as you don't ever really see anything. You just only hear the things that the guy hears. And so you kind of have to fill in the blanks and, and use your imagination and stuff like that. But like I said, it, it's a little bit lighter on story. I wish there was more of a story structure underneath it, but... If sort of the, the, the visuals and the style of it and, and the, definitely the sound and the atmosphere is enough for you, um, I would say to check this one out. Next up is The Canal, and this one tells a story of this film archivist, and he begins to find his sanity deteriorating and crumbling after he is given this old film from like the early 1900s that contains a family's murder on it. And this is another one that I would give a little bit more of a slight recommendation to. There are some elements here that I think are pretty effective. When you actually see the cursed film, there is some pretty gnarly, memorable imagery. And I also found the relationship between the father, who's the main character, and his son to be pretty effective and impactful, as this one, the, the, the child is put into kind of some difficult, troubling situations where, you know, his life is threatened and he's in danger and stuff like that, and, and the father is trying to keep it together and, and, you know, protect him and stuff like that. I really found the dramatic, that dramatic element to be pretty effective. You know, the, really the main reason why I'm just giving this one a slight recommendation is because I found the story to be fairly predictable, as I was really able to guess what exactly was going to happen and how it was going to end within like the first third of the movie. And so really the overall story didn't have as much of an impact as I had hoped it would. Next up is the only one on this list that I would not recommend, but I at least wanted to mention it because it fits my topic so well, and that is the movie Antrim. I actually just watched this the other day for the very first time. And this one I'll give a little bit of credit to though, as I do like how it's presented as it is told in this modern documentary type style. It starts off building this kind of story and legend of this movie called Antrim, which is supposedly this lost film, I think from like the 70s, that anytime it was screened, it led to you know, tragedy and death and stuff like that. And so then, you know, the, the film kind of builds up the film and then we are shown Antrim. And it's about these uh, two young siblings, brother and sister, who go out into the woods and they dig this hole to hell and all hell kind of breaks loose sort of thing. And the main issue that I had with this one is that it's just kind of boring and uneventful. Not a whole lot happens. There is some decent kind of creepy imagery. It has a... Uh, a pretty kind of convincing, authentic looking, you know, visual presentation to it. But other than that, not a whole lot happens. It's just really slow and kind of boring. And I just didn't really get a whole lot out of it. Next up on my list is Red Rooms. And this is actually a newer release film that just came out this year. This is a French film. And this is a really interesting movie as it tells the story of this woman who becomes obsessed with this high profile murder trial. And this one really looks at our obsession with true crime stuff and what is it about that that we find so interesting. And I'm amongst that because I like true crime as well. There's just something about the mystery and the story that, you know, we can't help but obsess over and consume endlessly. And so this one kind of is similar to that film Thesis where, you know, you're kind of dealing with some kind of interesting concepts and ideas and really kind of almost reflecting back on yourself. And it's like, why do I like this stuff? What is it about it that I find so interesting about these types of movies sort of thing? But yeah, Red Rooms is is a really interesting type of movie with a very complex and intriguing character. Now, when it comes to the cursed movie aspect of this it has to do with Red Rooms themselves, which to my understanding, it is a fictional thing, but what it is, is it is a live stream on the dark web that people can log into and pay money to watch somebody get murdered live on camera sort of thing. And there is an aspect of that in this movie 
and it is a very memorable scene. And I'll just leave it at that. But man, this is one, it's just very thought provoking and will leave you really kind of uh, thinking about it long after it's done. So yeah, Red Rooms, man, it's a pretty solid one. Definitely gets a recommendation from me. So yeah, check it out. And for my last three recommendations, I've got three TV series for you. So first up is Archive 81. This is a Netflix original show. Unfortunately, it only ran for one season as it was canceled, but I still found quite a bit in that season to enjoy. This one tells the story of this video archivist who's hired to restore a collection of tapes, and he finds himself reconstructing this video of a filmmaker and her investigation into this cult. And man, I really liked Archive 81. This one is also unique and, and very kind of unpredictable. It goes in some unexpected directions. So you've got a found footage aspect to it. You've also got a sci-fi element to it as well. You got the whole cult aspect, which I usually find really intriguing. And again, it's another one. It's got a good mystery. It's dark. It's creepy. It goes into some unexpected places. And so, yeah, definitely check this one out. If you haven't seen it, it is well worth your time. Next up is season one of the show Channel Zero, which is called Candle Cove. And this is one of the most underrated TV horror TV shows that I've ever seen. Uh, but it's got four seasons, and each season tells a different story based on these creepy pastas. And the first season, Candle Cove, tells the story of this child psychologist who returns back to his childhood home because this kid's TV show that ran from the 80s when he was growing up has mysteriously returned, and it is coinciding with these disappearances of these children. And so... He goes back home to try to figure out what the heck is going on. It also gets into some surreal territory. Some of it gave me some David Lynch vibes as well. It's got some cool um, creature designs and stuff like that also. Just a lot of really cool stuff in this. This is another one that has a really good mystery, just a really engaging story, and also deals with some interesting things like, you know, it gives you kind of some nostalgic vibes, but also deals with stuff like, you know, uh, childhood past trauma and, and repressed memories and things like that. And so just the whole kind of vibe of it, I was just really vibing with the vibe, okay? And so, yeah, if you haven't seen the show, man, I, I would recommend all four seasons, but as it specifically relates to the cursed media, cursed movie type stuff, check out season one, Candle Cove of Channel Zero. It's pretty good stuff. And my final recommendation, I'm going to kind of bend my rule a little bit as this isn't about a cursed movie, but this is actually a show about a cursed vinyl LP record, and it's called Dead Wax. This is a Shudder original series that I actually just heard about and just watched. Uh, for the very first time just within the last few days. And this is eight episodes, but they're like mini episodes as they range between like 10 and 20 minutes. And all eight episodes together is only like an hour and 45 minutes. So it's basically just like a movie. And this one tells the story of this girl who's played by Hannah Gross, who's basically this like investigator as she goes and tries to track down uh, rare records. And she finds out about this record that apparently will kill you if you listen to it. And this one has a really cool visual presentation. I love them kind of old classic film noir crime movies from the 40s and 50s. And so this has a very kind of neo-noir type style to it. Just very kind of seedy, high contrast, stark lighting and stuff like that. Very shadowy and murky. And I just kind of like the whole atmosphere and vibe of it. It's another one that has a very good kind of mystery and this sort of investigative aspect where they're really just trying to follow clues and, you know, they'll uncover one clue and that'll lead them to the next step and then that'll lead them to the next step. I just kind of like how the whole investigation of it all unfolds. And so this is one that I've never seen anybody talk about until literally I heard it about it for the very first time just a few days ago and I gave it a watch and uh, was pretty impressed by it and, and had a pretty good time with it. So if you haven't seen Dead Wax and you want something about a cursed LP record, go check it out. Well, that's all I got for you today, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully there was something in there that you'd never heard of and you got some new recommendations and new stuff to watch. So thank you again for watching.
Appreciate it. If you got anything out of this video, you know what to do. Do me a favor and do not click that subscribe button unless you want to be haunted by the beard.